take a bite. Ho ho! We're back. We're so back. Hey guys, welcome back to Flooded with Flavor. It has been a long time since I last said that. Happy 4th of July. This video, if all goes to plan, should be releasing on July 4th. So happy America Day from a, a Brit, as wrong as that sounds. Before we get to this big old slab of meat here, let me address the elephant in the room. The uh, two year to the day absence. I've been smoking a lot of meat in the absence, but obviously I wasn't recording videos. The reason for that was because frankly, recording cooking videos, especially the barbecue, which require like very long cooks, when I didn't have any of the equipment or anything to do it with was just a logistical nightmare. For example, to film a brisket video where I get up at like three in the morning, uh, I would have to have somebody else there to record for me at three in the morning, which as you can imagine, wasn't the easiest of things. But now I've, I've splashed out, I've literally spent thousands on a brand new setup to record these videos. It's gonna take a little bit of getting used to. I'm very, very, very new to the whole camera scene. I don't even know what exposure is. I don't know what exposure is, right? So I'm very new. But as you can see, we have a whole new setup, whole new kind of layout for this, which should be pretty fun. Um, it's gonna take a few videos for me to get used to filming stuff and filming outside and all this stuff. But my plan is for this to become a very frequent kind of content. And now that I have the recording equipment to allow that to happen, I see no reason why it shouldn't. Welcome to the brand new era, the dawn of a new era of Flitter with Flavor. I'm planning on being a lot more experimental with the kind of stuff that I make. I think when I did it before, one of the reasons that I stopped enjoying making the videos was partly because they were so like, organized and like specific. And I don't want to do that because when I'm like smoking at home, cooking at home, I don't cook or smoke like that. I'm very experimental. I won't measure anything. I will eyeball shit. I will just cook as long as I need to or as little as I need to. I won't play by any specific hours. I will try very weird things. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, right? That's the magic of it. And that's what I want to do with the content on this channel. I want to be a lot more experimental, a lot more kind of like free and fluid with it and just have more fun with it. Because before, the first few videos were fun, but it just felt like it was getting too like organized and, and just planned and I don't want that. So um, that's why I've splashed out on a whole new setup for this. Hopefully everything's good. Let me know any feedback in the comments, but Let's, uh, let's get to the moment that we're waiting for, the, uh, the meat reveal. This bad boy. I have a very large plate of, oh Christ out of me, beef ribs that I am going to prepare uh, and smoke up in the morning. It's currently like 7 p.m. So it's going to be an early start for me tomorrow. But before that, we've got to trim and rub these boys up. I realized that I just picked loads of meat up without putting gloves on and I'm about to put gloves on but fuck it, who cares, right? Who cares? It's time to glove up. So then, let's get to the star of the show. This is, as I said, a big rack of beef ribs. These are beef dino ribs. So these are like big boy ribs. These yield a lot of meat. And the best thing is, they are very easy and very quick to smoke. And they're like the best of brisket, the best of the brisket point. So lots of fat in this meat on the bone. So you get a lot of natural flavor off that anyway. And they're easy to cook very hard to screw up. They've got a large temperature range where they can be good to eat. So you don't have to worry about cooking it to a specific temp or anything like that. They can be anywhere from like below 190 to like 195, upwards of like 205 to 210. 210? Not quite that high. That's very high. If your beef ribs are 210, maybe consider not cooking again. But the start of the show, we've got to trim them. So I don't normally trim beef ribs that much. And uh, I'm also not going to trim these all that much either. What I'm gonna do though is remove a little bit of the fat for the purpose of tallow, which we'll get to later. So the trim on these, like I said, not much coming off. Um, I've also not trimmed beef ribs in a little while, so they might be a little bit rusty, but I'm just gonna take off some of the fat cap for the sole purpose of turning it into tallow. Tomorrow, when we cook this bad boy, um, we're also gonna cook a lot of the fat alongside it, turn it into liquid gold, also known as tallow, and pour it all over the top, which will, as I'm sure you can imagine, Made for some damn good meat. There is quite a lot of silver skin on these ribs, which is normal. Big old hard bit of fat there. That will not run it down properly, but it will when I turn it into tallow. Are you getting sick of hearing the word tallow yet? Let me know in the comments. You know what? There's something really peaceful about trimming a big rack of meat outside in nature. I've never done this outside before, I don't think. Something feels very calming about this. So, they're trimmed up now. Uh, looking pretty good. Nice and, uh, as you can see, fatty in the muscle. Uh, that's the good thing about beef ribs. Beef ribs have a lot of intramuscular fat. So even if you do cut the entire fat cap off, 
it's not the end of the world. There's a lot of uh, striations there in the muscles. I'm sure you can, you can see that there. Please do not do a Tyler one and drop it. Please do not do a Tyler one. So, it is time to talk about rub. The biggest thing in barbecue besides the meat. Uh, I'm using a homemade rub today, which is in a Hello Cow. A, a Hello Cow? Now that's a Freudian slip. A Holy Cow shaker. But this is a homemade rub. I use this on just about everything that I cook, whether it's barbecue or not, literally. You will see me use this in almost every single video on this channel for the most part, besides very specific things. And this rub is insanely simple. So it's just salt and pepper, but with like a little bit of a twist. So it is, if you want, if you want to follow along at home, four parts Kirkland 16 mesh ground black pepper, two parts Larry's seasoning salt, and two parts kosher salt. The reason that I, I half the salt in between the two of them is because I love the texture and the bark that the kosher salt creates because it's big flakes. I also love the flavor of like the paprika and the MSG and I think the garlic in Larry's as well. It gives it color as well. So it's like a very nice combo. So the rubbing procedure, very simple. It, I mean, you rub your meat with it. <laughs> what else can I say? You can also use a binder as well if you want. But again, I don't really feel like using a binder today. I would normally use mustard. Don't really feel like it. Don't see a need to. I don't think it makes that much of a difference. The, really the best bit about a binder is it makes it easier for you to see what you've missed with the rub. One thing I am going to do real quick is I'm going to come back with another small layer of just pepper because I like beef ribs to be pretty peppery so the, the pepper ratio should be a little bit higher than salt. Right, they are very nicely rubbed. Just going to pat it all in. And now it is time for these bad boys to go in the fridge. I'm going to be up tomorrow morning, maybe like 7am to stick these on the pit and I'll show you the new pit in the morning. So until then, good night. Good morning, Vietnam. It's currently way too early in the morning, but it doesn't matter because we've got the pit firing up and we've got some beef ribs to go on for a nice long seven or eight hours in the smoke. Speaking of, let me show you my newest pit. So time to go full shaky cam mood. This is my offset pit that I run as well as the trigger, which is when I'm on camera, right there. Still in use, but this offset is my, uh, my baby now. I love cooking with a real fire. This bad boy is the Cactus Jack Longhorn 20 inch, I believe. So big pit, very, very big smokestack for good draw. Learning to cook with actual fire, as you can see we're, we're starting here, was not easy at first, but my God, was it worth the, the effort and the, the research investment. Almost everything I've cooked on here because of the actual fire next to the pit has just been so, so damn good. There's just something about cooking with an actual fire that is so unbelievably satisfying um, and obviously part of the fire is the fuel now i meant to have a, a wood shipment come in today and it's not come in so we may have to get a little bit creative with wood we have a lot of uh, as you can see here oak splits uh, which is my preferred wood for cooking with however we might run dry on the logs if we do no issue we have a load of a uh, load of chunks that we can use as well whiskey barrel chunks i think maple chunks um quite a few different things that we can run with but hopefully uh, that should be enough wood, maybe? I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. But the thing with an offset is obviously you have to build a fire, and to build a fire, you need a coal bed, which is what I'm making right now. So I have a chimney starter here that is packed full of lump charcoal, which we're gonna burn down for like, maybe another 15, 10, 15 minutes to create a bed of coals. And then got some leftover, partly charcoal logs there that are gonna go on. And then the actual logs are gonna go on. And then the beef ribs are gonna go on. So I will check back in when the beef ribs go on. So, as you can see, these coals are now ashed over, which means it's time to dump them in the firebox. We're also gonna close the door of the pit and also bring the dampener on the smokestack to about half level, which should allow us to get between maybe 275 and 300 degrees, give or take. Now we play the waiting game. So, beef ribs on, and that pan is gonna be used for the tallow soon, so, I'm gonna put a new log on the fire, maybe every 45 minutes or so, and I'll check back with you later when the tallow goes on. So it's quite hard to see because of the light, but this is literally just the, the fat that we trimmed off the beef last night. Just gonna go ahead and stick it in this pan. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook out all of the liquid fat in it, and then pour that fat on the ribs. So after about eight and a half hours in the smoke, here we have a beautiful rack of mostly smoked beef ribs. Um, for some reason, the temperature were a little bit weird, so we're attempting like around the middle at like 200 and then towards the sides it was like 180. I flipped it around so many times in the pit. I don't know why the temp is so different but we're gonna rest it for a while probably like an hour and a half maybe. Uh, but before we do that we have liquid gold to pour on it. 
Now it's time for these bad boys to rest. Here we go. We have the beef ribs that were smoked for eight and a half hours, the rest of 45 minutes, covered in tallow. It's time to uh, cut these bad boys up. Oh, literal butter. Now that is a cut. My friends, bast in the incredibly bright sunlight. That is what I call a beef rib. Oh my lord. My friends, we have done it. Got a beautiful smoke ring on that. We've got some great rendered down fat in the middle. This is gonna be a juicy bite. Right then, as you can see, I'm currently staring to heaven's gates. It's very bright outside, but oh lord, I've been waiting for this for a long time. Let's take a bite. Mm. Ho ho! My friends, we're back. We're so back. That meat is so unbelievably tender. The rub has worked perfectly. You can taste the pepper and the salt and the garlic and the MSG, of course, the MSG in the Larry's, but it's not overpowering. It doesn't make you want to rush to the next gallon of water, wherever that is, to take a massive drink. It's perfect. It complements the beef. The tallow is just the, the fatty cherry on top. That right there. Ooh, oh, it's been a while since I said that. That right there, my friends, that right there is what I call a beef rib. That is a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know what, I'm gonna blow my own horn. It's been a while since I've done, since I've done a video. Uh, I'm gonna blow my own horn. That is one of the best damn beef ribs that I've ever tasted. I gotta go in again. Mm. Oh my God, so rich, so tender. I'm telling you, that is the best bite in barbecue right there. I mean, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do what you shouldn't do in barbecue. I'm gonna squeeze it. I mean, oh my God, the moisture. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm literally watching a pool of liquid come out of this. This is just, this my friends is why I should have never stopped making videos on this channel. This is one hell of a welcome back. Happy 4th of July, my friends. Um, make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. Uh, this channel is back in full force, as you can tell by the whole new recording setup, still getting things uh, nailed down. It's gonna be very trial and error, but that's kind of what I want the channel to be. I want it to be more fun, less, organized and boring in that way. I want to just like, you know what? I want to mess around with fire and meat. Is that too much to ask? It shouldn't be. So make sure you hit sub. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for coming back to the channel. Like sub the usual shit that I never ask for in regular videos, but I will do in this because that is, you know what I needed the bite. That, that, is, that is a subscribe worthy beef rib right there. That is gorgeous. Oh my Lord. Fucking heart, so good. Holy shit. Right, I'm gonna go carry on eating this inside. I've got a lot of protein to get down here. If if I get into Creative Clash next year, I'm gonna have to bulk up quite a bit. So, I got some protein to go eat. Thank you all for watching once again, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Oh, oh, oh that is a good beef rib. Oh shit, so good the fucking wasp wants it.